Hey everyone, Dr. D here, and in this video I'm going to show you how uh, meiosis works. So let's uh, get started. Um, don't forget that before meiosis, uh, special germline cells in your testes or ovaries, your reproductive organs, undergo interphase. Uh, if you don't remember interphase, uh, quick review. Uh, during interphase, your diploid cell with 46 chromosomes undergoes a G1 or cellular growth. The cell grows in size. Notice that you have homologous chromosomes inside. You have one pair of centrioles. You then have subphase S where the chromosomes get replicated. Now you have two of every chromosome. You have 92 total chromosomes. At this point, you have what are known as sister chromatids. Remember, homologous chromosomes are the maternal and paternal set, right? Or maternal and paternal version of every chromosome. Sister chromatids, on the other hand, are identical copies of the same chromosome. So at the end of S phase, you have sister chromatid pairs forming. And then in G2, which is the final subphase of interphase, the centrioles replicate, the centrioles replicate, and they start moving to opposite poles of the cell. Okay, the nucleus is still there. The DNA starts to condense, but it's not quite condensed. All right, so that's where we leave interphase behind. So don't forget, interphase has just happened. We are now ready for what's called meiosis one. During prophase one, tetrads form and crossing over happens. What does that mean? If you look inside the nucleus, the sister chromatids pair up with homologous sister chromatids as a tetrad. What that means is both of mom's chromosome one attach to both of dad's chromosome one with a synaptonemal complex holding them together as a tetrad. So this would be the tetrad for chromosome one, for example. This would be the tetrad for chromosome two. And notice what's happened here. It's almost like the tips have exchanged between one of the two sister chromatids here and one of the two sister chromatids there. They've swapped genetic information. That's called crossing over. Crossing over has happened. Okay, so now you have one, two, three, four chromosomes that are no longer at all identical. Uh, crossing over increases genetic variability Crossing over results in more genetic variability, okay? None of these four chromosomes are the same after crossing over. So again, what's happening during, during this prophase one, don't forget each cell has 92 total chromosomes. Uh, tetrads formed, crossing over happened, okay? And crossing over increased genetic variability. We're now ready for metaphase one, where tetrads line up by independent assortment, okay? Notice that the tetrads have lined up down the center of the cell along this imaginary plate called the metaphase plate. Okay, tetrads line up. And what does that mean, independent assortment? Independent assortment means each tetrad has a 50-50 chance of lining up this way or the other way. See, the, the, way, the way the first tetrad lined up, it lined up with the blue chromosomes on the left or the paternal homologs on the left. Well, that one could have very well, you know, that tetrad could have lined up the other way with the blue ones on the right. And so could the second one. The blue ones are on the right, but it could have very well 50-50 chance lined up the other way. That's what independent assortment means. And, and that leads to a lot of genetic variability. Okay, that leads to one, over 8 million different ways that our tetrads could line up because we have 23 of these tetrads during this phase, not just two like this simple picture here. All right, so then at the next phase here, anaphase one, the DNA separates. But what's separating from what? Okay, we say that the homologs separate. What does that mean? This pair of sister chromatids separates from the homologous pair of sister chromatids. In layman's terms, these two dads chromosome one separate from these two mom's chromosome one. So all of dad's information for chromosome one is headed to the cell on the left. All of mom's information for chromosome one is headed to the cell on the right. And if we're looking at chromosome two, it's the opposite story. 
All of mom's information for chromosome two is headed to the left. All of dad's information for chromosome two is headed to the right. So this is gonna result in two genetically different cells, right? So telophase uh, one, you see, you form two cells and those two are considered haploid. Uh, let me get to this in a second. First of all, notice that daughter nuclei form. Daughter nuclei form. Each cell now has 46 chromosomes. Okay. But realize this. Um, look, in this cell, you have two dad's chromosome ones and no mom's chromosome ones. In the other cell, you have two mom's chromosome ones and no dad's chromosome one. This means that even though you have 46 chromosomes, which means two sets of chromosomes, it's not quite diploid anymore. It's not quite diploid anymore. These cells are technically haploid because you are missing in this cell a mom's chromosome one. You only have two of dad's chromosome one. If you do not have homologous chromosomes inside of a cell, that cell is not technically diploid. Does that make sense? So even though, yes, technically this cell has two sets of chromosomes and this cell has two sets of chromosomes, because they're not homologous sets of chromosomes, that's not diploid. So for, uh, in layman's terms, because you don't have a dad's chromosome one and a mom's chromosome one to back it up, you just have two of dad's chromosome one, that's not diploid, that's haploid. And because of that, meiosis one, meiosis one is considered reduction division, which means, what did you do? You went from 2N uh, diploid cell, 2N diploid cell, which has homologous chromosomes, mom and dad information for every chromosome, to N, 46 chromosomes, N, haploid, because you no longer have mom and dad homologous information in each cell, okay? So moving on, I'm just going to show you uh, meiosis 2. I'm just going to show you what's happening in this cell. I'm not going to worry about that cell, but just know that whatever's happening in this cell is happening in that cell. I'll show you what's happening in this cell here in my meiosis 2 time. All right, this is meiosis 2, prophase 2. And notice what's going on here. This cell has 46 chromosomes, even though it's N, it's haploid because it, it's lacking homologous chromosomes. Uh, during this step, sister chromatids form and condense. You see this sister chromatid pair forms. For example, this would be two of dad's chromosome one. This sister chromatid pair forms. For example, that would be two of mom's chromosome two. Okay, and you're done with prophase two. Next you have metaphase two. What's lining up down the center of the cell? It looks like the sister chromatid pairs line up at the center of the cell. And I wrote that here. The sister chromatid pairs line up. Anaphase two. What's separating from what? It looks like those cohesin proteins holding the sisters together broke and the sister chromatids separate from one another. So the sister chromatids separate from one another. All right. Sister chromatids separate from one another. Now, lastly, I, I, I'm showing you here what happened to all, you know, all of the cells. So not just what happened to the left cell here, but also what's happening to the right. So I'm showing you all four of the resultant cells. Each cell now has 23 chromosomes. These are now called the gamete cells, daughter nuclei form, okay? And what you should realize is none of these four cells is genetically identical anymore. These are all four genetically non-identical cells. So for example, this cell and this cell are not genetically identical. And you know why? Because crossing over. You see this, this uh, dad's chromosome one is just dad's chromosome one. This one has a bit of mom's chromosome one in it because of crossing over. So this cell and this cell are not the same due to crossing over. Neither are this cell and this cell. You see, these cells are not the same due to crossing over. This is mom's chromosome one. This is mom's chromosome one with the blue tip. So these are not the same. These are not the same. And then these two are not the same as these two. You see, these two up here are not the same as these two down here because independent assortment. Remember during metaphase one, independent assortment happened. Uh, so that's why these two 
and these two are not the same, okay? So none of these four cells are the same genetically. All of these cells are now um, haploid. They have one set of chromosomes and these are called the gamete cells. And meiosis II is considered what's known as equational division, okay? This process of equational division. Why? Because you've simply gone from 46 chromosomes to 23. Whereas remember, meiosis I was called reduction division. Why? Because you've gone from a diploid cell to two haploid cells. You've reduced the ploidy of the cells. And one last thing you should understand about meiosis, and that is that it looks like meiosis II is a lot more similar to mitosis than meiosis I, okay? And look, meiosis II, sister chromatid pairs form, sister chromatid pairs line up, and sister chromatids separate from one another. Well, that's, that's pretty much what was happening during uh, mitosis over there. Whereas in meiosis I, tetrads form, tetrads line up, Oh, tetrads formed and did uh, crossing over, which is different. Tetrads lined up with independent assortment and then homologs separated. That's completely different than what happened during mitosis over there. So I hope this helps. This is my rundown of meiosis. And let, let me know below if you have any questions. I'd be glad to answer them. And thank you for watching.